Introduction to Ducks Lounge. Come and read more of my works on the website of Uowen. Think to oneself. You are listening at novelfull.audio. I don't know where I came from or where I'm going. Fragments of memory flash through my mind, but I can't piece together a complete pattern. On the desolate land, there was no moon in the night sky, only a few flickering stars struggling in the sky, seemingly pointing the way for homeless people. In a daze, a young man dressed in gorgeous clothes but broken stumbled from a distance, seemingly losing his soul and leaving only an instinct to move forward. I don't know what he went through, how long he walked, and slowly stopped by a small house. The house looked weathered, and every gust of wind made a creaking and shaking sound. Perhaps there were many similarities between the two. After hesitating for a while, he finally chose to push open the door that couldn't be closed tightly, regardless of whether it was dirty or messy inside. He walked in like this, not choosing the pile of dirt, perhaps a bed, but in a corner, leaning against the wall, slowly falling asleep. Su Jin, Su Jin. I don't know where the call came from, but he opened his eyes and found a short, really cute woman standing in front of him, softly calling out a name. He thought to himself, is Su Jin my name? Who is she, why does she look so familiar, and who am I, you should wake up now, the woman suddenly exclaimed. He suddenly opened his eyes and was still in the dilapidated room, but it was already daylight. Is my name really Su Jin? Well, no matter who I am, let's use this name in the future. From now on, I will be Su Jin. He pushed open the door, different from the dilapidated rush when he arrived. At this moment, with the dilapidated house as the center, the green grass spread out like someone had laid a layer overnight. He walked around the corner of the small house a few times, and finally stopped by the east wall. With a casual push, the entire wall collapsed, and then the other three walls fell one after another without any support. Su Jin stared at the ruins, not knowing what was on his mind. Then he turned around and left, and soon returned. He had two large pieces of wood on his shoulder, which he casually threw aside. After a short pause, he left again, repeating this process until the wood piled up like a small mountain before starting to process it. With a flip of his hand, a ten-inch long, pitch-black knife appeared in front of him. The blade emitted a cold aura, imprinted with sunlight, reflecting an eerie color that captured the soul. With just a gentle touch, a large piece of wood is like a piece of tofu being torn open. Then there was a quick swing of the knife, and neat wooden boards were processed one by one. When they were all processed, it was already night, and this speed was astonishing if it were ordinary, but Su Jin was not very satisfied. He didn't rest and started building all night. When it was dawn again, a small courtyard was built at the original dilapidated house. However, Su Jin, who had been busy all day, was still full of energy. He looked around and found that there was still a wooden board left and used. Just as he was about to throw it away and enter the house, he suddenly seemed to have remembered something and ran out. Then, with a twist of his hand, he took out a pen and wrote a few words on the wooden board. He hung it on the door before entering the house without looking back. If you enter the door and look, a wooden platform suddenly appears at the original small mound, let alone a bed, and Su Jin is already soundly asleep on the wooden bed. Restaurant and Caravan You are listening at NovelFull.audio I don't know how many days and months have passed, and the newly built house has also climbed moss, and the house has also been decorated like a restaurant, but there is no oil or water on the clean table, probably no one has come to eat before. But Su Jin was not in a hurry either. He even got himself a lounge chair and would lie in front of the restaurant to bask in the sun on weekdays. He would close the door on time at Yushur in the evening, day after day. One day, someone suddenly woke up Su Jin, who was lying on the recliner with his eyes closed to rest. This young man is the owner of this restaurant. I, Su Long, our caravan, is passing through this place and we hope to stay overnight here. Do you have any vacant rooms? Su Jin rubbed his eyes, stood up and stretched lazily, 
looked at the person who came down, and saw that he was tall and robust, but with a lush beard on his face. Looking at the caravan again, there were only a dozen or so people in total, and the most I dot catching one was a man and a woman. They rode on a steed and did not come down. The woman looked very beautiful, but also appeared full of heroism, while the man was very young, with a rebellious expression on his face. Su Long looked at Su Jin and quickly said, These two are my younger brothers and sisters, Su Hu and Noi. We have no ill intentions. If possible, I hope you can stay overnight here, and these five tails of silver will be considered as room money. If that's not possible, we'll turn around and leave. We won't disturb you. Su Jin had no concept of silver but he really hoped that someone could come and talk about what exactly this place was and what the nearby scene was, so he welcomed them in. He casually pointed to the stable next to him and said, you can lead the horse inside. If you want the goods, you can put them in the backyard. Su Long was very happy when he heard this and said to the grooms with a smile, hurry up and do it. After unloading the goods, you can eat. He asked Su Jin again, I don't know if there's any food available. We're camping outside and haven't had a hot meal for a long time. Money is not a problem. Su Jin thought for a moment, nodded, and walked towards the kitchen alone. The man and woman were also on horseback, and the young man asked, Big brother, I remember the road my father marked on the map was not like this. It should be a desert. Why did it suddenly turn into an oasis? And this area is hundreds of miles deserted, how could there be a restaurant doing business here? Su Long furrowed his brow upon hearing this, but quickly relaxed and said, We've been out for so long this time, and now there's a place to rest and tidy up, which just solves the urgent task. Moreover, I see that the boss has a pale complexion and no calluses on his hands. He's just someone who hasn't practiced martial arts. When we eat later, we'll eat separately. The three of us take turns on duty at night, and I believe there won't be any major mistakes. The woman also said, Big brother is right. Second brother, it's been so long since he came out and hasn't taken a shower. He's already feeling very uncomfortable. Remember to help me keep the door open when I take a shower later. Su Hu thought for a moment and felt that it was indeed the case. He laughed heartily and said, Don't worry, little sister. Whoever dares to peek without eyes, my second brother will teach him a lesson. So the three of them walked into the restaurant together, found a table, and sat down. But at this moment, Su Jin was a bit puzzled because he didn't know what to cook. Although his mind occasionally came up with some recipes, they were all too shocking. After much thought, he suddenly realized that there was a huge beef leg in the corner. It was found by Su Jin on the nearby grassland a few days ago. After eating some, he thought the taste was good, but today there is only one leg left. He originally planned to eat it himself after closing the door tonight, but now let them also enjoy the delicious food. So he made a red stewed beef and cooked soup with beef bones. When the people outside were already hungry, he brought the food to the table. Su Jin felt a little embarrassed and said, there aren't so many people in the store on weekdays, and now there's only a little beef and beef soup. You can make do with it. After finishing, he sat down and served himself a big bowl of rice. Su Nuai pursed his lips and thought to himself, this boss is really strange. He even ate with the guests and was just about to speak. Just listen to Su Jin say, by the way, this meal is just for me to treat you to. Just tell me about the situation outside. At this moment, Su Long and Su Hu were completely immersed in the taste of beef, indulging in it and seemingly unable to speak. Sunoi watched his two brothers reincarnate from starvation and could only put down his chopsticks. He sighed inwardly that I hadn't eaten a bite yet and began calmly talking about the outside world. The outside world. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The area we are in belongs to Qianlan County in the eastern regions. There are three major cities nearby, namely Sunset Town, Qingfeng City, and Mingwe City. The three cities form horns with each other, 
and this is the middle zone of the three cities. However, before this, it should have been a desert, and I don't know when this oasis appeared. So where is outside of the eastern regions? Su Jin couldn't help but ask. You are such a curious shop owner. It would be a miracle for you to be able to leave Qianlan County in your lifetime. Why do you inquire so much? Sunoi joked. Su Long finally swallowed the meat in his mouth and said to the two of them, Little brother, your beef is really the best food I have ever eaten in my life. Little sister, try it quickly. But it's not that we don't tell you outside the eastern regions, but we haven't heard of it either. Sunoi also picked up a piece and put it in his mouth. He took a sip and sure enough, the soup was overflowing. The aroma and toughness of the beef exploded in his mouth, and he took another sip of the soup. His eyes lit up, and he blurted, No wonder you two enjoyed your meal so much. It's really delicious. Then he buried his head in his work. As the three siblings began to compete for food, Su Jin fell into contemplation. Why don't I have any impression of what these people said? Where exactly did I come from? Well, let's not worry about so much anymore. Let's continue living here, we'll remember one day. Sunoi let out a big burp before pulling Su Jin's thoughts back. Then he stood up and said to the three of them, It's getting late, I need to rest. If you leave early tomorrow morning, you don't need to say hello to me. He then turned around and walked towards his small wooden bed. Looking at Su Jin's departing figure, Sunoi shouted loudly, Hey, aren't you afraid we'll steal all your things? Su Jin paused for a moment, but did not turn back. As he walked, he said, Please do as you please. What a strange person. Three people coincidentally came up with this idea. However, when they went upstairs, they found that there was no hot water. Feeling angry, Sunoi directly wanted to go to Su Jin to argue, but fortunately, he was grabbed by Su Long's wrist. The plan to take a shower was soaked in soup, so the three of them had to go back to their room and sleep. Of course, it's taking turns sleeping, after all, we still have to guard the goods. At night, Su Jin did not sleep, but quietly left the restaurant. No one noticed this and did not return until dawn. When we arrived at the small courtyard, we suddenly noticed a beautiful figure practicing swordsmanship, soaring up and down, with a left thrust and thrust. Su Jin watched from the side without making a sound to disturb. When Sunoi received his move, he realized that someone was peeking on the side, habitually drawing his sword to warn him. Upon closer inspection, he realized it was Su Jin. So it's you, it's not polite to sneak a peek at someone practicing swordsmanship, said Sunoi with a feigned anger. Su Jin retorted, I'm in my yard. If you don't want me to see a different place, and your swordsmanship is too flamboyant, it's more like dancing swords than practicing swordsmanship. This statement made Sunoi's hair boil. He raised his hands on his hips and said angrily, as someone who runs a restaurant, you can understand what swordsmanship is. The swordsmanship passed down by our Su family is one of the best in the entire Qingfeng city. Even the lord of the city praised it greatly. You even said it was a sword dance. Could it be that you, as a small person, still know some advanced swordsmanship? Su Jin didn't speak, but picked up a wooden stick and casually stabbed towards Sunoi. In an instant, Sunoi felt like he was facing a formidable enemy, wanting to dodge but having nowhere to hide but this feeling disappeared completely in an instant. Su Jin didn't say much and went back to his room. After a moment of unconsciousness, Sunoi shook his head and comforted himself, saying, it must be an illusion. It seems that the pressure has been too great and the psychological burden has been too heavy lately. What kind of swordsmanship is this? He is really a despicable guy, pretending to be sophisticated and attracting the attention of this young lady. At this moment, Su Hu shouted outside, Little sister, it's time to set off. Please finish delivering this shipment as soon as possible and go to Jushin Tower to rest and rest. When Sunoi arrived at the entrance of the restaurant, he found that everyone was ready. 
Su Long asked, Did you just say hello to the boss? Upon hearing this, Sunoi remembered the thorn again, but suddenly realized that he couldn't recall the details. Just nodded lightly, flipped over and rode ahead. Su Hu approached Su Long and asked, What's wrong with you, little sister? It seems like you have something on your mind. Su Long remained silent and turned his head to look at the restaurant. He found a plaque like wooden board on the door with the three words Wenxin Ju written on it. He silently remembered it in his heart. Then he commanded the convoy to start off. Su Hu stayed at the end and muttered to himself, Everyone is so cold and high, is it because I ate too much beef last night and they didn't eat enough? Then he rode forward as well Su Jin returned to the state of living alone, but there were some wine, meat, and food in the restaurant. If someone knew the art, they would find that there was a famous wine called Zi Luo Chun that only existed in the Dongwang city, the first county city in the eastern regions. Potential Business Opportunities You are listening at NovelFull.audio A dozen days later, a caravan appeared outside Qingfeng city, and entered the city gate in a grand manner amidst the admiring gaze of the surrounding people. I finally got home, I must have a good sleep this time. Sunoi stretched out a big lazy waist and said happily. Yes, with this batch of goods, I believe it will definitely solve the urgent need of my Su family, Su Long said happily. Big brother and little sister, let's go home quickly. Don't make dad and his team wait too quickly, Su Hu reminded. I see, second brother. It's been a long time since I saw dad, and I really miss him. Sunoi left a sentence and rushed to the front with joy. The joy of returning home even dispelled the shadow brought by Su Jin's thrust. Su Long and Su Hu looked at each other and smiled, following behind calmly. Along the way, a dazzling array of small stalls came into view, with food, drink, and entertainment, as well as various clamoring sounds, all showcasing the prosperity of the city. As you head towards the central area of the city, there are more high-dot-rise buildings, including restaurants, inns, gambling houses, and brothel theaters, all displayed here. When we arrived at the west of the city, we could see the two gilded characters of Sioux Mansion from a distance. And someone had already stood there waiting at the door, with a middle-dot-aged man with bare arms and bulging muscles standing at the forefront. Sunoi arrived at the mansion, quickly dismounted from his horse, and threw himself into his old father's arms. Su Qingwen was also extremely rare towards this girl, patting her on the back and saying, Finally, Noi has come back. Your two brothers didn't take good care of you all the way, you see you have become thin. Sunoi said, No, Dad. Both my older brother and younger brother take good care of me. Besides, I voluntarily joined this caravan, and I also need to exercise. In the future, I must become a strong person like you. Su Qingwen shook his head and said with a smile, What kind of strong person is falling? In the future, you will definitely surpass your father and become a big shot. At this moment, Su Long and Su Hu finally arrived. Su's father gently pushed Su Noi away and directly opened the box on the carriage. Inside were some exquisitely shaped iron tools, swords, guns, and axes, with various styles. He patted the shoulders of the two brothers and laughed, Great, with this batch of weapons, we can maintain the Su family's market in Qingfeng City. This will give us time to find new alchemists. The others were also smiling and welcomed everyone into the mansion together. The evening reception banquet was very sumptuous, and everyone praised the young and promising children of the head of the family. Everyone was happy together, it was really enjoyable. In a study, Su Long was reporting to his father and another middle-dot-aged man who looked similar to Su Qingwen but was very thin and weak. And this thin and weak man is not simple. His name is Su Qingwu, and he is Su Qingwen's younger brother, but he is born with blocked muscles and veins, so he appears very thin and weak. But Su Qingwu was naturally eager to learn. He was knowledgeable and had a delicate mind, making him the intellectual star of the Su family. At this moment, 
he had a deep interest in the oasis that appeared in the desert that Su Long mentioned. When did the oasis appear there? The inconvenient transportation between the three cities is mainly due to the long distance and lack of rest in between. If we build a transfer station there to seize the opportunity, we can open up the trade route, and the financial resources will definitely be rolling in. Upon hearing these words, Su Chengwen's eyes lit up and he patted his thigh suddenly. Chengwu, it's still your brain that's good. I didn't even think there would be such a business opportunity. Although there are now a batch of weapons to supplement, how precious are the alchemists. We don't have enough chips to attract them. If it weren't for Master Chen's willingness to help us refine weapons for twenty years on behalf of his father who saved his life back then, our Su family wouldn't have thrived today. Now that his family has left, the weapon store will eventually close. But if we can seize this oasis first, the Su family can continue to thrive. Su Long looked at his excited father and uncle, rubbed his head, and said, Dad, second uncle, but there's a strange thing. Someone in that oasis runs a restaurant without any staff, only a young man. Su Chengwu and Su Chengwu quickly asked in unison, How strong is he? In my opinion, he is just an ordinary person who doesn't seem to know any martial arts skills at all, but I can't rule out that his strength is too strong and his disguise is too good. I didn't see it, Su Long replied. I don't think so. A young man, no matter how strong he is, cannot be so strong that you can't even see his strength. He should just be an ordinary person. But how did he build a restaurant there? Could it be that some family behind him has set their sights on this piece of land? Su Chengwu pondered for a while before saying, All right, you can rest for two days, then lead a group of people to quickly go there and explore the boss's reality. After that, we can make a decision. I hope we can get the favor of heaven. After speaking, the three of them went out together and joined the family dinner. Horse Bandits You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. After the three of Sunoi left, Su Jin started living a leisurely life alone. Even the vegetables, fruits, and meat he had prepared last time were mostly spoiled, with only some rice, grains, and alcohol preserved. Watching the sun set again, Su Jin stood up slowly and patted his clothes without any dust. After tidying up, he returned to his room to rest. Time had unknowingly arrived in the middle of the night when a group of uninvited guests suddenly arrived outside the restaurant. They were all ferocious, with bloodstains on their clothes and a long scar on the leader's face. He looked at the restaurant and said, It's really strange. When did a small tavern be built here? Who can eat it in such a place where birds don't poop? However, the younger brothers behind him did not think about this question, but instead excitedly said, Second in command, our brothers have been chased for so long this time, and we haven't had a good drink in a long time. Today, this tavern must be an opportunity sent by heaven to us, maybe there may be unexpected wealth. Scarface was not moved by the younger brother and said, this time it was because we didn't inquire about the situation well, which led to offending people. The big boss had to abandon us. If we didn't have eyes this time, maybe my life would be gone. After hearing this, everyone praised the second in charge for his foresight and foresight. However, Scarface clearly didn't want to miss this opportunity to make a fortune, so he said to a young man behind him, Old Chen, go knock on the door and see if there is any fraud. Yes, the second in charge. Old Chen immediately stepped forward, slammed the door hard, and shouted, Is there anyone who can breathe? Open the door quickly. However, there was no response, which inevitably made everyone feel a bit embarrassed. So Old Chen increased his strength and slammed the door with a clattering sound, Open the door quickly, or else we'll demolish your shabby shop. As soon as the voice stopped, it immediately quieted down again. Old Chen turned to Scarface and said, Second in charge, the people here shouldn't have fallen asleep, right? They haven't even agreed to such a loud voice. Scarface was also a bit angry. She was used to being domineering on weekdays, but today she has suppressed her arrogance. As a result, he lost face and got off his horse. 
He just kicked the door, but instead of kicking it open, he took a few steps back. This couldn't help but make him furious, and he kicked hard again, but instead the door didn't open and he fell on his own. The people behind him quickly helped him up. Damn it, what kind of material is this door? It's so hard, Scarface spat and cursed. It's better to set fire to it, but it can't get in. It's better to send them to the west, suggested a younger brother. Scarface was also in a fit of anger and agreed to this suggestion, but before they could even take action, a stern shout came over. Stop. I saw more than ten people galloping towards me on horseback in the distance, like a bolt of lightning in the dark night, and in an instant, they arrived at the restaurant. Through the faint moonlight, it was only then that Su Long and his companions came to inquire about the situation. This time, their three siblings, as well as Su Qingwu, brought several skilled men and horses to inquire about the situation. As they were about to arrive, they suddenly noticed a bunch of torches flickering ahead. Su Hu, who had good eyesight, noticed that this group of people wanted to set fire, so the group rushed over. But when they walked in and found out they were still acquaintances, Su Long said with a fierce expression, I think someone is doing this kind of killing and arson. It turns out it's you bandits. And Scar's face also saw clearly the person coming, although the situation was not good, there was no drop in momentum, and he said, so it was you guys. Last time I chased you and ran away, if it weren't for a sudden sandstorm, you would have been dead ghosts under my sword. I'm sorry, last time if it weren't for the fear of losing the goods, my aunt would have beaten you all over the ground. You're still talking shamelessly here. Sunoi directly drew his sword and pointed at the other party. The two sides were originally at odds, but now they meet on a narrow path, and the atmosphere instantly becomes tense. The bandits, who had been relying on robbery for a living for years, were even more aggressive in this situation and rushed forward first. However, they obviously underestimated their opponent this time. When they were halfway through, they found that only three people were blocking the front, and the others on the opposite side chose to wrap around, looking like a big fish had rushed into the fishing net. Night Battle You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Su Long looked at the galloping bandits and shouted, Good day. Then he met Su Hu and Su Noi, and in the midst of the light and shadow of the sword, they met each other. Scarface fell several times, and Su Long's three bodies were not even messy. Ha, huh, now you know our strength, Sunoi said with a mocking expression as he looked at the surprised bandits. But at this moment, the bandits were in a panic. They didn't expect so many people to have three years of relatives, let alone more than ten people on the periphery who had already kept an eye on them. Scarface looked at the little brothers behind him and said, Brothers, today you're either dead or I'm dead. Killing them will give us a way out, otherwise we'll have no place to bury ourselves. After speaking, he took the lead and rushed forward again. However, halfway through, he regretted it because he found that the little brothers behind him had dismounted and surrendered directly. He was also distracted for a moment and was shot in the chest by this visually stunning Su Hu, struggling a few times before dying. And the remaining bandits began to kneel and kowtow, shouting for mercy. Su Qingwu, along with others, also gathered around and said, the horse bandits usually do all sorts of evil, such as burning, killing, and looting. If these people are not killed, they will only harm others, which will be very detrimental to our future actions. After saying this, he gave a glance to the others, and the Sioux family ignored the horse bandits' plea for mercy and quickly executed them neatly. After a brief cleaning of the scene, Su Chingwu said to Su Long, is this the restaurant you're talking about? It's a bit strange, and I can't figure out who would open a shop here. Just in case, we'll set up camp on the spot and explore it tomorrow morning. Yes, second uncle, Su Long replied. He beckoned everyone to get busy. However, Sunoi took the opportunity to sneak around to the small courtyard behind him and climbed over the wall. She often remembers that prick these days, but every time she feels like something was missing. After many attempts, she came to the conclusion that this boss was just trying to scare herself. 
There was no such advanced swordsmanship, it was just using her psychological influence. She muttered as she walked, Second uncle overestimates this guy too much. Coming all the way to live in a tent outside the restaurant is like being deceived by intelligence. As we walked, we arrived at Su Jin's room. Through the window, we could see Su Jin sleeping in bed. Sunoi thought to himself, you're really a pig. It's so noisy outside that you can sleep. If it weren't for us, you might have been burned to death. In return, I can stay with you for a free night. So Sunoi ran to the room where he had slept last time and lay on the wooden board, slowly falling asleep for some reason. But she didn't notice that Su Jin was standing in front of her door at this moment, but she didn't go in or peek. She sensed that the people inside were asleep and walked away. Standing under a peach tree in the yard, Su Jin muttered to himself, since you guys helped me kill that group of idiots, I'll reluctantly let you stay overnight. It seems that this place is not very peaceful either. The bandits are really a disaster. We need to find a way to get rid of them and don't keep bothering me. Suddenly, a noisy sound came from outside, and Su Jin went ahead and opened the door of the restaurant. Originally, it was Su Qingwu and his team who discovered that Su Nui was missing and were searching everywhere. Su Jin walked forward and said to the crowd, there's no need to search anymore. She sneaked into my yard and fell asleep. The sudden sound instantly quieted everyone down. Su Qingwu looked at the open restaurants and then glanced at Su Jin, asking, are you the owner of this restaurant? Su Jin nodded, while Su Long and Su Hu quickly walked over and touched Su Jin's head, saying awkwardly, I'm really sorry, little sister, I've caused you trouble. Then he said to Su Qingwu, second uncle, this is the little boss I mentioned to you. Then he said to Su Jin, this is my second uncle. We are here to visit you this time, and we hope you don't suggest anything. Su Jin said, what's up with you coming to me? Su Qingwu said, my name is Su Qingwu. There are a few things we would like to ask about this trip, but first of all, may I ask for your esteemed name? My name is Su Jin, it's quite cool outside at night. Everyone should come in and talk. Town Planning You are listening at NovelFull.audio Everyone found a table and sat down, while the accompanying Su family guards were sent by Su Qingwu to inquire about the terrain and area of this suddenly appearing oasis. Let's talk about it. Su Jin was curious about what these people were looking for him at night. I wonder where Boss Su came from. Su Qingwu asked tentatively. Su Jin's gaze suddenly darkened and he lowered his head, saying, I don't know either. This surprised everyone because Su Jin did not show any signs of lying. It is quite rare for a person to not know their origin. Su Jin said again, since I was conscious, I have found myself here. At that time, there was only a small dilapidated house here. I thought I might as well stay here for now, and maybe one day my memory will be restored. I see. Su Long said, Brother Su, the first time I saw you, I felt very friendly. If you want to go out for a walk, you can come to the Su family in Qingfeng City. I will definitely treat you well then. Don't worry too much, I believe your memory will be restored someday. Su Jin's eyes lit up and she quickly asked, have you ever seen me somewhere before? This made Su Long feel a bit embarrassed. He scratched his head and said, I grew up in Qingfeng City since I was young, but I've never seen you before. I guess you must be from out of town. Su Jin suddenly felt a bit disappointed, and at that moment, Sunoi, who was asleep behind, walked over and said, So your name is Su Jin, and your name is really nice. I have a good idea, maybe I can help you remember your background quickly. Su Jin hurriedly asked, What method? Sunoi glanced at Su Qingwu, who nodded at her before saying, Our main purpose of coming this time is to build a small town here so that the caravans can rest. And your place is a restaurant. If the town is built, there will definitely be many people coming to eat. If someone knows you by then, can we help you go back to where you came from? Su Jin thought for a moment and said, This is a good method, thank you very much. 
I don't know when you can start construction. Su Qingwu didn't expect everything to go so smoothly, so he quickly said, when we go back and report to the master, we will start immediately. Su Jin nodded slightly and said, remember to bring the wood over. There isn't much wood around here, so you can come to me anytime if you need help. Upon hearing these words, Sunoi joked, you probably cut off all of them and built this small restaurant, right? Su Jin glanced at her and didn't answer. Instead, he said, it's late today. Let's take a break and talk about it tomorrow. The people you sent out will also be back by then. He then returned to his room, just like last time. Leaving the four of them looking at each other, Su Long sighed and said, Brother Su Jin is really a kind dot hearted person. Sunoi glared at Su Long and said, You've started calling yourself brothers so quickly. You're not afraid to stick to someone else's cold buttocks even if you're hot faced. This person is not simple, you need to be careful when interacting with them. However, Su Chengwu frowned and said, I once heard in books that some people are tired of fighting and live in seclusion in a certain place. I'm afraid this person is deliberately claiming amnesia to deceive us, but in fact, he is a powerful old monster. These words startled the three siblings, and Sunoi exclaimed, then we're still building a town here. What if his demonic tendencies take us all? Su Chengwu shook his head helplessly and said, since Grandpa Chen left, our family has been unable to find any other master craftsman. Our Su family's weapons will decline sooner or later. Now, we are building a city here that belongs to our Su family first. By then, not only will we have abundant financial resources, but we will also be able to take our family to the next level. No matter what, we cannot give up this opportunity and must give it a try. Looking at the three people who were still surprised, he said again, but don't worry too much. Maybe I guessed wrong. All right, we've been on the road for a few more days. You guys go rest and find a room for Uncle Air. I'm getting older and staying up late can cause headaches. Su Long and Su Hu hurriedly took Su Chen Gu to rest because his health was not good. If it weren't for the significant matter this time, he would generally not have left the Su family's old house. But Sunoi was a bit afraid to rest here. She had been afraid of those ghosts and monsters since childhood, and the fear brought by the previous stab had surged in her heart. So she decided to sit here until dawn. Su Jin, who returned to his room, did not rest. He was considering what happened today and the possibility of the future town. However, he didn't come up with a solution and could only mutter to himself, there's nothing good we can do right now. Let's give it a try first. The desert is very cold at night, and the oasis is not much better. Sunoi didn't persist for long before falling asleep due to exhaustion. At this moment, a black shadow flashed by, gently embracing the proud young lady and sending her back to bed. Then he checked the other three people one by one, confirmed that they were all asleep, and quietly groped out the door again. Mutant Beasts and Mysterious Helpers You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Oases in the desert not only attract humans, but also various wild animals. However, at this moment, a mutated rattlesnake with a body size far exceeding that of a normal rattlesnake, which had reached the level of a python, was truly stunned by this Sioux family guard. At this moment, the rattlesnake had already put on its posture and was ready to launch an attack on the humans in front of it. Since it unexpectedly discovered and entered this suddenly appearing oasis, it felt that some potential in its body had awakened, slowly growing bigger and bigger, but at the same time, it also became increasingly hungry. The humans in front of it were already drooling. It swung its body and bit directly towards it. Su San never thought about fighting this big snake, he just kept dodging and sending out signals to notify others to come and support. Their task this time includes not only investigating the situation but also solving general dangers. But obviously she underestimated the combat power and intelligence of this mutated venomous snake. The big snake first pretended to move forward, and Su San dodged to the right. 
As a result, the big snake made a twisting motion in the air and then heavily hit Su San's body with its head. This immediately knocked Su San out, feeling as if he had been shot an arrow with a heavy crossbow. A mouthful of blood spurted out in an instant, and the snake, which smelled the smell of blood, became even more violent. It used its muscles to shoot out directly, looking at the bloody mouth. Just as Su San had already decided to accept his fate of death and closed his eyes, suddenly a black light flashed in the distance, followed by a scream. Su San opened his eyes and found that the snake's seven-inch mark had been pierced by a knife. Later, a person unexpectedly descended from the sky, and with a single gesture, the knife automatically flew back into his hand. Su San asked in shock and fear, Are you a fairy? Thank you for saving me. The person who came did not answer this question, but silently said, Plus, you only saved a total of nine people, and a few have already been eaten. This sentence made Su San's face turn pale with fear, as he almost became the prey of this monster's mouth. Go back on your own, it's not safe here. After speaking, the mysterious person turned around and left, leaving only the body of the big snake and the injured Su San. Su San struggled to stand up, looked at the big guy who almost killed him, kicked its head twice, then identified the direction and limped towards the position of the small restaurant. After about dawn, all the guards who went out to inquire about the news returned. Of course, five of them were completely unable to come back. Everyone exchanged ideas about the monsters they encountered, while also grateful for the support of the mysterious helper. At this moment, Su Chengwu, who always wakes up early, walked out and glanced at the injured and disheveled heavy people, wondering, what's wrong with all of you? Is it so dangerous here? Ere ye, we have encountered a monster, but it cannot be said to be a monster. It is a group of mutated wild beasts, they are huge in size and very intelligent in their minds. We are no match at all. What's going on? Tell me more, Su Chengwu quickly asked. We encountered mutated venomous snakes, lizards, scorpions and other monsters that launched attacks as soon as they saw us. However, most of them were only found at a distance of more than 10 kilometers from the tavern. Oh, by the way, we were able to come back thanks to a mysterious person who saved us, or rather a fairy, because he flew over. If someone said this, Su Chengwu would think he was dizzy, but everyone said so, and some people died, which couldn't help but make his back cool. The mutated monster, the mysterious immortal, all of these indicate that this action is not simple. Su Chengwu thought to himself, isn't it the legendary monster and cultivator? I once saw in a book that there are some mysterious cultivators in the world who can soar through clouds and mist, move mountains, and fill the sea. Could it be that the sudden appearance of an oasis here is related to them? Why did they save us mortals? Su Chengwu paced back and forth, and the guards also quieted down and didn't dare to disturb him. It wasn't until Su Long and Su Hu also woke up and said, Second uncle, what are you doing? Have they come back? How is the situation here? Su Chengwu explained the situation just now, which startled Su Long and Su Hu a lot. No, there will still be people who can fly and rattlesnakes the size of pythons. How could such a thing happen? At this moment, Su Jin also walked out and said calmly, when I first arrived, I also saw mutated animals. Last time you ate beef, I killed a mutated cow, and I don't know how it came about. You killed a mutated monster alone, shouldn't it be deceiving? Su San interjected, his face full of disbelief. He couldn't believe that such a thin and weak young relative could kill the guy who almost killed him alone. Ha ha, Su San cannot be reckless. Ba Su is not an ordinary person at first glance. What's so remarkable about what you can't do? Su Chengwu suddenly burst into laughter. This makes everyone a bit confused. What are you doing? At this moment, Sunoi, who had just woken up, walked out of the door and asked. She woke up in the morning and found herself sleeping in bed, which really scared her. She quickly checked her clothes and didn't feel any problems before letting go. 
Then he heard the voices of everyone outside and walked out to see what had happened. Su Jin's Strength You are listening at NovelFull.audio Su Long pulled over Su Nuai and repeated the rough content just now, which surprised Su Nuai. With his mouth wide open, he looked at Su Jin as if he was about to eat him. He stuttered and said, You, are you really a master? So, what was your sword that day? Is that really your sword technique? It seems you haven't studied it well, Su Jin said, glancing at Sunoi. Immediately after, he approached her, grabbed his sword, turned around, and drew it out in one fell swoop, with the tip of his sword pointing straight at the Su family. At this moment, everyone felt as if a fierce beast was staring at them in front of them, so frightened that they couldn't even breathe. Su Jin, like last time, quickly withdrew his sword, and the sense of oppression immediately disappeared. This move is called sword pulling technique. With just this move and practice it diligently, it will be similar to the move you are currently practicing. Upon hearing Su Jin say that his family's swordsmanship was not good, Su Nui said in disbelief, isn't it just an ordinary sword drawing? It doesn't seem like anything special, it's just that you have strong strength. This instantly made Su Qingwu nervous and he quickly said, what are you talking about? This is much stronger than our family's swordsmanship. Apologize to Mr. Su. Su Jin's strength can easily defeat all of them, and Su Qingwu doesn't want to provoke this guy with unknown origins but amazing strength. However, Su Jin waved his hand to Su Qingwu, saying it was okay, and then said, no matter how exquisite the moves are, they are a combination of basic sword techniques such as chopping, chopping, and stabbing. Although they can indeed have a certain effect in some situations, if you master the most basic sword techniques, you can discover the flaws in other people's sword techniques and defeat the enemy with one strike. After speaking, he didn't care if everyone understood, but said, you all come with me. Then he walked ahead alone. Su Chingwu ordered, Su San, you guys stay and see Mr. Su's restaurant. Su Long, you three go follow Mr. Su. Everyone said yes. After walking for a while, Sunoi couldn't help but ask, where are you taking us? Su Jin did not answer, but continued to walk forward. Sunoi wanted to continue asking, but was grabbed by Su Long and Su Hu. Mr. Su doesn't want to answer, just follow him. Just keep your mouth shut, he said after walking more than ten miles, suddenly a huge noise came from ahead. Su Jin said lightly, we're here. There's no meat left in the restaurant. I'll take you to get some goods. Help me carry the prey back later. At this moment, the source of the movement also revealed itself, it turned out to be a huge bison. It had a rough nose and red eyes, rushing straight towards Su Jin and others. Su Long and his companions only realized that the description of the guards was not exaggerated when they saw this huge creature. Even the three of them couldn't fight this guy together. At this moment, they could only pray that what Su Jin said was true. He really had the strength to subdue it alone. However, Sunoi couldn't help but say, Hey, do you need any help? Su Jin just said slightly, No need, just lend me your sword for a while longer. After finishing speaking, the bison walked slowly forward, and when it saw the humans in front of it looking down on it, it immediately quickened its speed. At the moment of contact between the two, Su Jin drew his sword and struck, and the entire cow was split in half like tofu. There was no blood on the sword, and the bison did not even fall immediately. It took a few steps to break open. Sunoi ran up and ignored the pungent smell of blood. He kicked the body and exclaimed, This is too exaggerated. Is this big guy not worth it? Su Jin ignored Sunoi's nonsense. In fact, he found that the girl talked too much and liked to ask questions, so he had become accustomed to ignoring her words. You can see that sword clearly just now. Take this half back and calculate the tuition fee. However, at this moment, Su Hu suddenly thought of something and shouted, No way. It immediately caught the attention of the three people. Su Long gave Su Hu a wild look and sighed in his heart, saying, 
these younger brothers and sisters are just a pit brother. Su Hu also ignored Su Long's reminder and said to Su Jin, the tuition fee is too expensive. At least you have to treat us to another meal of beef. Then he took the initiative to shoulder his cow butt and greeted the two of them, saying, what are you still waiting for? Come and help us. Team Expansion You are listening at NovelFull.audio After returning to the restaurant, Su Jin was not stingy and cooked a large pot of beef for the Su family to eat. There are only five people at this table, Su Jin, who are fine. The other few surviving guards are about to start a fight. You fight me for it, and some people are even squeezed out. However, compared to others at this moment, Su Chen Gu, who was careful, noticed that this meat was extraordinary. Not only was there a significant difference in taste, but after eating it, there was also a faint energy flowing throughout the body, which was even more evident in people like him with blocked tendons and veins. Su Chen Gu quickly asked the others if they had this feeling, but because it was too weak, Su Long and the others shook their heads, while Su Jin only felt a hint. He thought it was the energy brought by the food itself, so he also shook his head. Ba Su, can I buy some beef from you without hesitation so that I can take it back for research, said Su Chen Gu with great anticipation. For someone like him who cannot practice martial arts, he suddenly discovered hope, just like a drowning person grabbing a life saving straw. You want this, Su Jin frowned. I can give you some, but I can't give too much. This thing is also rare here, and I'm too lazy to always go out and find them. Thank you very much, thank you very much. Su Chen Gu sincerely thanked him. At this moment, everyone was almost full of alcohol and food. Su Long seemed to drink a bit too much and leaned on Su Jin's shoulder, saying, Not only is the meat good today, but this wine is also very enjoyable to drink. I don't know what kind of wine to use to brew it. This is Mr. Su's unique secret recipe, how could I tell you for no reason? Su Chen Gu scolded Su Long Su Long was very afraid of his second uncle at home, which suddenly woke him up from drinking. Hurriedly said, I've drunk too much. I'm sorry, Brother Su. It's okay, but I didn't brew this wine myself, I bought it. It's a bit far from here, so it might be a bit difficult for you to rush over. Su Jin didn't pay attention, but he didn't say where he bought it because even if he said it was based on the strength of the Su family, he didn't have the ability to buy the wine. Su Chen Gu nodded repeatedly and then said, We've already inquired about the situation here. How about this? I'll take them back and report the situation to the head of the house. The three of you are here to help Mr. Su with some work. Su Long and Su Hu quickly said yes, but Su Noi murmured softly, if you want me to work for this guy, just dream about it. Su Chen Gu was so angry that he almost started cursing again, but Su Jin didn't care. If you're willing to stay, it's okay. I just need a few more assistants. Of course, I won't let you do it in vain. If you have any questions about practicing martial arts, you can bring them up, and I can give you some answers. Having witnessed Su Jin's prowess, Su Long and Su Hu were extremely happy and quickly metabolized. Even Sunoi's eyes lit up and he said, isn't it just work? Miss, one can handle two things. Then the three siblings began to tidy up the table, while Su Chen Gu and the others began to return to Qingfeng City. As for Su Jin, he chose to continue lying meditation at the entrance of the restaurant. In the blink of an eye, several days passed. Due to the absence of guests, the three siblings were bored to death with nothing to do. Fortunately, Su Jin helped them solve several difficulties in martial arts practice and taught them how to use the sword pulling technique well, which allowed the three of them to settle down. That day, another group of people and horses walked over from afar. Su Jin ignored it, but Sunoi was very excited because she thought the members of the family had already arrived. However, she felt strange because it was impossible to do so quickly. It wasn't until she approached that she realized there was another group of bandits. The leader was a tall and thin man riding a white horse, charging towards him with a fierce momentum. 
Just as Su Long and his companions were about to step forward for battle, Su Jin said calmly, Don't worry, let's see what they're here for. It would be impolite if it were a guest. Soon, the group of bandits arrived at the tavern, and the tall and thin leader said, Have you ever seen a group of people like us, including a scarred face? This immediately made everyone understand whether these people were enemies or friends, and through this person's characteristics, his name also appeared in the hearts of the three siblings, the leader of the horse bandits. Gao Fei, 